Well, hello, Internet, and welcome to part one of my WordPress shopping cart tutorial in which I will show you how to make a totally functional shopping cart system inside of WordPress. Technically, part one of this tutorial is my how to design a website in which we made this guy right here, and I provide a link to that if you want to check that out, because you should understand how this works. I'm going to be using the WP e-commerce plugin in this tutorial. Pretty much everybody loves it. The one thing they don't love about it, it is not highly customizable. And that's where I come in because this tutorial is going to show you how to customize it and use our jQuery slider that we had previously. And it does all kinds of cool things like clicking add to cart. If you look over here, see the product automatically jumps in there. It's going to calculate shipping. It's going to do pretty much anything you could ever imagine that you would like a shopping cart system to do. And this is what it's going to look like in its semi-final situation or layout. And this is what we currently have. So in this tutorial, I'm going to show you how to fix everything here to make this look like this. Now, the first thing you're going to want to do is go to getshopped.org, and it looks like this, and this is where you're going to be able to download the WP e-commerce plugin, and all you have to do is come up here where it says download plugin now, and click on that, and it's automatically going to download the WP e-commerce code in a zip file, and you want to uncompress it, and then this is basically what it is, and then you want to take this folder and copy it, and then go wherever you have your WordPress installation, this is what the folder should look like, and if you can't see this view at full screen. Then you're going to want to go to a folder called WP Content, open that up, then go to Plugins, and inside of the Plugins folder, you're going to want to paste the WP e-commerce folder that you just copied, and then we can close this. We can jump into our WordPress dashboard, and then go down to Plugins on the left side of the screen, click on Installed Plugins, come down here to where it says WP e-commerce, click Activate, then you're going to be sent a little warning message that says WP Commerce is ready if you plan on editing the look of your site, blah, 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 blah. Update your active theme. Just click on update your active theme and it's going to automatically load all the pages you need for the shopping cart system to work. You're not going to have to do anything. And I'm not really going to go over all this stuff right now. I'm going to cover that in a later tutorial. And then you're just going to check off all of these different boxes you have here and click move template files. And now we're going to get into the nitty gritty of actually coding this guy so that it looks nice like you see here on the screen. So I'm going to open up Text Wrangler. This is my normally used text editing tool. It's free if you want it. Notepad++ for PCs also works good. And basically we're just going to be using the same code we used from my how to design a website tutorial. You're going to scroll down here because this is where we're going to be making all our changes. This is the little scrolling guy that you see right here. This guy that allows you to scroll back and forth throughout your different products. So we're just going to come inside of here, down where it says demo inside of my code. And I'm going to show you how to pull very intricate information out of this guy. Scroll content item is a div that surrounds all of the little pieces of this jQuery slider. And let me bounce it back out here. So scroll content item surrounds each one of these, being the picture, the title, the more info button, and the add to cart button. So what we're going to want to do is create a loop that is going to automatically spit out all this information. Now I don't need all of this, so I'm just going to delete this out of here, down to where it says end of scroll content item. And there, now we have a lot less information on our screen. Now, like I've described in previous tutorials, whenever you want to pull information from the WordPress database, you have to use what is called WP Query. And here I'm going to show you how to do it. First off, you're going to want to make sure there's no white space on the left side of here because WordPress sometimes flips out if you have white space there. Then you're going to want to go my underscore query is equal to new WP query. And this allows you to query the WordPress database. And then we're going to say that we want to pull post underscore type. Make sure you have the quotes there is equal to. Then you're going to want to say WP SC dash product, just like you see there on the screen. Like I said, there's code underneath of this video. What that's going to do is it's going to pull all of the products and ignore the posts and the pages and so forth. It's just going to pull products. Now I have to tell it how many posts I want to get. So I'm going to say posts per page like that. And I'm going to say 11 because that's what works best for my little tool. I'm going to put another comma. And then I'm going to say WPSC product underscore category right, like that. And I'm going to say that I want all the products that are in the featured category. That's what that means right there. And then close that off. That's going to give me 11 products that are in the featured category inside of this tool. Okay, it's just pretty easy to understand. And I'm just going to close that off. Then what I'm going to say is while there are still posts to be pulled, I'm going to say my underscore query have posts 
pretty much exactly what it says there. While I have posts that meet the above criteria, my underscore query. What this is going to do is it's going to pull all the information. Later on, I'll show you how to load information into those guys. And nothing changed. This guy right here is just going to go right here. So we're just pasting exactly what I was describing there. Let's make sure it comes after div class scroll dash content. Like you see right there. Then we're going to have scroll content item. These contain the image, the title, and then all my buttons. So basically I just have to come in here and point at that information. Now the first thing we're going to work with is product image or prod image as I have right here. And I'm going to come in here to the source section and I'm going to query WordPress to get me exactly what I want, which is the thumbnail that is associated with the product. And you just go WP SC the underscore product, and then underscore thumbnail. Took me a while to dig up all of these different things. And I'm going to say I want it to be 125 by 125 pixels. Next thing I just leave blank, and then I'm going to put in single, right like that, and then close off the PHP. And this is going to pull in the actual location for the product thumbnail, and it's going to give it these dimensions. So that's all it's doing, 125 by 125 pixels. Not rocket science. Then we're going to leave class the product the same as it always was before, except we're going to add alt text to this guy, and this alt text is going to be the title, so we're going to call the title. Now WordPress is pretty cool, makes it real easy to remember what you want. And close off that PHP, and then put yourself a little closing quote. So that's going to grab my thumbnail, and it's also going to grab the title and assign it to alt text. So as you can see here, I'm not really changing that many different things, and we're coming down to product name. Now again, I want to make this dynamic. So I'm going to go inside of here. Now if I want the actual page assigned to this product name to be loaded, if somebody clicks on that title, I'm going to do another PHP block inside of here. And I'm going to go echo. I'm going to say get permalink. And that's going to automatically transpose inside of there the location for the product page or the URL. And I just have to say product dash little carrot symbol and then put ID inside of there. And then we can close that off and then close off my PHP code. And then just leave that quote inside of there, so that's fine. And then inside of this anchor tag, I'm also going to put title is equal to, I'm gonna make another call to PHP. I'm gonna go echo, and I'm gonna call a function called get the title. And this is also going to return the title. Product dash carrot ID. So that I have a little bit more information, and then close off the PHP section. And then don't forget to put little quotes around that, and then quotes at the end of that. And then inside of here, we have to actually fetch the title. And we also want to make sure that the title isn't too long. So I'm going to go PHP and I'm going to say NTT, which is shorthand I use all the time. New Think Tank, my website, the underscore. And I do that so that I don't conflict with anything else that might be going on inside of here. I'll try to avoid using variables that are used elsewhere. And to get the title, I'm going to go ID like that. That's going to assign the title for the actual product to NTT title. And then I'm going to go echo, call the substring function inside of PHP, and go NTT, the title. And I'm going to say I want the first 43 characters. So from the zero character of the first character to the 43rd character, because that fits nice. And there that goes. Well, now we got to get down to the product more info button. In this situation, I'm going to show you how to provide a button on the screen that is going to take you to the product page. So in this situation, I'm just going to get rid of this altogether. And instead, I'm going to type in input TYPE is equal to, and I'm going to say button value, and value is going to be what is going to be printed on my button. It's going to be more info. Class is going to be equal to NTT submit button. And I'm putting that on there so that I can style this. And then I'm going to say on click is equal to window.location.hreference is equal to. And then here I got to fetch the actual location for the product page. Again, get permalink product dash ID. Close that off. Close off my PHP code. Put that little quote inside of there. Semicolon, quote, and then close that off. So that's going to give me a button that I'm going to be able to style because I have this class assigned to it. And if that button is clicked, it's going to send them to the location for the product page itself. So that's what all that does. Then there's actually a shortcut that I can use for the add to cart button. And this is really cool. So I'm just going to go inside here and this is provided by WP Commerce, the plugin itself. So like this, PHP, you can just go echo, WPSC, add to cart button ID. That's the ID for the page and for the product, right like that. And then that's all done. So that's cool. And then right here, I have to actually close my while loop. 
See, here's the while loop that I'm talking about. So I have to actually close that guy. So I'm just gonna go PHP and while. This guy right here is actually going to be the scroll content thing. I like to put comments inside of here. So this is gonna be scroll content div that surrounds that. And pretty much everything else here can be exactly the same. But what I need to do now is go into the style section. So I could actually save this guy. And then what I need to do is go into JQ slider two, which is from the previous tutorial. I'm kind of guessing that you've seen that. If you haven't, again, watch it. Otherwise you've probably already left this thing anyway. And then inside of here, what I'm gonna to wanna to do is change those buttons that we just created. And let's go back and take a look at this again. What I'm basically gonna do is change the styling on these buttons so that they look really nice like you see here on the screen. And this, by the way, is a way to change buttons and using WP Commerce. This is an often question that is posed to people. And so that's one of the reasons why I'm doing it. Another thing is how to create a slider inside of WP Commerce, which obviously I'm showing how to do that as well. So basically what I'm gonna to wanna to do is I'm gonna get rid of the styling just by commenting it out. I know it's not supposed to do this, but this is the way I develop, so. And I'm gonna get rid of all the other stylings because these are buttons now, they're not links. So there's no reason to try to treat them like they are links. So that's commented out. Then what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make styling changes to NTT submit but right like that. And this is the class that's assigned to the submission button right here that is called more information. Tab that in and I'm gonna say background dash color and I'm just gonna use exactly what we used before which is 535353. No use in typing that out, just do that. And then I'm also gonna change font size. This is all subjective what I'm doing here. You can do whatever you want. This is just the way that you style buttons inside of pretty much anything. But this is how you style buttons using WP Commerce, which is a question that people have. And if you play around with it for a while, you also have it. And then what I'm gonna do is also style the second button. Paste that inside of there. And this guy, you may actually wonder how I even know what this is. So I'm gonna show you. For this guy right here, I'm going to come in and I showed you this in the previous tutorial. This is Google Chrome, what I'm having, what I have here. And I'm gonna click on inspect element. Now, if I wanna figure out what class is assigned to this button right here, add to cart. Because remember, that was all pulled in dynamically using the special code that's provided by WP Commerce. So for right now, let's just file save that, and then we'll jump back over to index so I can show you. All right, so we're in index.php, and if we come down here, just to refresh your memory, right here, we're using a customized thing that is a customized function that's built into WP Commerce. This is going to pull out the button and display it on the screen, which is all great, except for the fact if I want to change styling on this button, how do I know how to do that? Well, that's what I'm gonna show you now. So again, inspect element, come into this guy, and then we're basically just gonna float around here until what I wanna edit or see more about is highlighted. I'm gonna open that up, and then I know it's contained inside the demo class, so I'm gonna open up the demo class, and then it's also gonna be inside of scroll pane, and it's also gonna be inside of scroll content, scroll content item, and then if we come down here to div class product add to cart, you can see right here that there is a class assigned to this button, and if we click further into the form, you can see right here that class WPSC buy button. Sorry, I can't increase the text size on this. You can just trust me that there is a class here called WPSC underscore buy underscore button. And I use Google Chrome to be able to find all that information out. So now I know I need to style that specific class. So let's open this back up and then we'll jump over into jQuery slider to jQuery product slider.css and we're gonna scroll back down inside of here again. All right, so here's where I have this. So instead of NTT submit button, I'm gonna go WPSC by B-U-T-T-O-N. And this is gonna allow me to perform styling on this. So I'm just gonna copy what we used before, except now it's gonna be a cool looking button instead of boring stuff. All right, then change my background on this, star that out, and then come down here because these aren't anchor tags anymore, they're buttons. I'm just gonna get rid of it, boom. And that's all you need to do to make this guy work. So if you make all those changes, you'll see exactly what I have here on your screen. And in the next part of the tutorial, I'm gonna show you how to play around with WP Commerce, change all kinds of things, fix your shopping cart, fix your shipping, go over all the different options available to you, and a whole bunch more. Leave any questions or comments below. Otherwise, till next time.